good morning, folks. How's it going? I may have done a silly thing. Time will tell. I purchased some chalk pastels. Not my usual stuff. I usually prefer to stay with the oil pastels. What the hey, it was 30 bucks. I, I always love trying new materials. I've got some more oil painting stuff in the works. Uh, this, this isn't one of them. This is something else. But uh, hopefully I'll be able to share that with y'all probably in the next couple weeks. I'm not gonna give an exact date. That's how you fail. Never give them expectations. That's a uh, number one lesson for you, straight from the horse's mouth. So join me as we figure out what to do with these pastels. See, basically what makes them tick. I don't know if these ones are gonna be any good. I don't know if Mungio, I know Mungio makes fantastic oil pastels, which is why I'm willing to trust them with some soft pastels. As to whether or not that is misguided or not, we will see. I'll probably need to buy a few other brands of soft pastels to make sure I am confident in my choice. So join me as we take a walk down the path of soft pastels. Voice over, you know the drill, let's go. So today we're going to be starting our video with a Fabriano 1264. Oh my god, I'm forgetting the paper. Yeah, 1264. I'm gonna leave that in because that's that's honestly just like a, just a little bit shameful and I think I deserve to be shamed about that because Forgetting the paper that I've been using for the last year is just unacceptable. So we got the Fabriano 1264 Mixed Media and 11 by 14. That's my go-to workhorse. I am changing my mind though with the Meetense Pastel Paper. It is a wonderful addition to my library and that might end up becoming my workhorse before too long. Speaking of workhorses, we also have the Crayola Erasables making a uh, not-so-debut appearance. They've been on the show several times before, and every single time they have played a pivotal role in placing my perfect pastel pictures. And today the subject matter is changing just a little bit. I am... I'm getting into birds a little bit. They're very bright and colorful, and it's a little bit harder to do the, the wacky colors that I am known for on birdie birds, but uh, growth demands sacrifice. I've always liked birds. I like the idea of having a pet that maybe is less interactive than a cat or a dog, but more interactive than a fish. It's a good in-between point for people that like to hear their pets rather than see them. Because you can you can hear birds no matter where you are in the house. You will hear the bird. Which you know for better or worse. If you hear the bird, then you know that the bird is safe and not in distress. If you do not hear the bird, then maybe you should go check on the bird. Likewise, you will hear the bird when you're trying to sleep, when you're trying to talk, on the phone, in person, when you're trying to watch television. You will hear the bird. You could throw a towel over the cage and it can have a little nap, but your options for not hearing the bird, aside from leaving the house, are a little limited. One of my co-workers has this beautiful little peach-faced lovebird named Zazu who is regularly brought into the store. I'm talking like maybe once or twice a month and pretty much gets the reign of the store, gets to fly around, land on people's heads, poop on the on the on the on the papers and just just having the time of her life. Really gets all the all the cuddles and putts that she can she can tolerate and when she doesn't tolerate, she just flies somewhere high that we need a ladder to get to her, which I mean, that's that's kind of my goal in life, to be honest. It does also happen to be the same kind of bird that I am using for a reference here, a peach-faced love bird. It's a member of the parrot family, so it's particularly intelligent and particularly talkative. You know, not counting... Well, maybe even budgies, I don't know. I don't have much experience with budgies. I know that they can mimic words quite terrifyingly. I don't know if you've ever heard a budgie speak, but it is like listening to somebody uh, speaking through a pipe leading to hell. And also, you know, it's been three minutes into this talking and I simply have not mentioned the pastels at all. So I'm gonna spend the next couple of minutes talking about them and then maybe we'll meander back to the topic of birds. Maybe we'll talk about that mysterious stain on my couch. Who knows? It's a mystery. I just talk and the words happen, baby. So these pastels are made by the same creators of my favorite oil pastels, Mungio Gallery. It's even the same line. The gallery is their professional range of pastels. These are square. They've also got, um, they call them homemade, which are like a, a little 
little fat pill shaped, probably about two thirds the length of these ones. And these ones are for fine details. They're a little bit harder. They're a little bit, they're so dusty. I don't know if their other pastels are like this, but they are so dusty. As a pastel artist, I do feel that sometimes we get a bad rep with regards to the uh, cleanliness of our art supply. And I feel like soft pastels do a lot of the damage here. Like, after using oil pastels, I will definitely have to wash my hands and I might have to wipe down the surface that I was working on. With soft pastels, I have to clean every surface within air breathing range of these pastels. Vertical, horizontal, it does not matter. The pastel cares not. The dust spreads far and it spreads well, my friends. So incredibly messy, just, just the worst. I still have dust that I'm cleaning up from these. I'm still finding little patches of color of greens and pinks and it's just, honestly, it's very pretty. I am afraid to breathe. Mind you, with my lungs, I am afraid to breathe anyway, but I'd rather not make it worse. You feel me? Also, these aren't quite as vivid as the gallery oil pastels are. I'm not sure if it's just because, you know, it needs, like it really needs the pastel paper or sanded paper or something that is not a fine tooth mixed media paper. Or if, uh, you know, it's just, it's not as good a quality as I was hoping for or what. I was able to get some deep tones with them, which was nice. Um, but it definitely feels like I'm using the medium wrong and in a way that I don't know how to describe yet. I definitely need to use these more often. So there might be a couple of more videos of soft pastel work coming out. It's a learning experience. Y'all are gonna learn with me, folks. Now, the store that I work at and many of the stores in the surrounding area do have a wide variety of soft pastels to work with, actually far more than they do oil pastels. But not that I'm <laughs> not that I'm bitter or anything about that. It don't be silly. Um, but they do have a wide variety to choose from, so I might spend some time, buy some cheap ones, buy some mid-priced, maybe a couple of small expensive sets and you know, just kind of just 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 go ham with it. Just play with it and have fun. And it'll just, it'll be fine. And everything will be fine. And it'll be fine. Although, you know, looking at it on camera, um, it, I don't know. It doesn't necessarily look like a lack of uh, quality. It does look like a lack of technique. So there will be uh, exercises in the future to sharpen my skills like I did with oil pastels, you know, blending, smoothing, uh, layering, all that fun stuff. And I will use better paper in the future. So I, I think that these are worth getting if you're new to pastels. If you're not new to pastels, I don't know if these are a good set to get because I am not smart at knowing things and I'm not sure why some of you listen to me to be honest, but I digress. So what can I say about these pastels that will make everyone like me? It is a decently varied set with a lot of lighter colors. If you're going to go for some darker colors, you're probably going to need to mix pastels, which is, I understand it is pretty easy to do in soft pastels. They do just grind into a fine powder and you just kind of just like whoosh it around with your finger. You just like, a, I'm making the mushin and making a whooshing mushin with my finger right now. And you probably can't hear it or see it, but it's happening. These are fantastic on a budget for $36. I can honestly say that these are some of the best um, soft pastels that I have tried. And please don't look too hard into that with the way that I phrased that. I will make an effort to maybe buy some more pastel types. Uh, we do have uh, Richeson is on sale right now. It's been, I think that it is being discontinued at our store, if not the, the uh, producer. So. I might pick up a couple of those. They've got the five packs for about 10 bucks each, so maybe five or six of those, and I'll be in Coolsville, and we'll try those out and compare and contrast, because more information is never a bad thing. In the meantime, I'm going to leave you with the rest of this picture, I believe. I just have the background to do for the most part, maybe a little bit of the foot. And after that, we're going to go to the outro and I'm gonna give you my final thoughts, probably. I haven't recorded it yet, we'll see. And maybe I'll just make a liar out of myself. It'll be fine, everything's fine. The world is a mess anyway, so if I'm not entirely truthful, simply because I don't remember things, 
Who's, who's gonna judge me? I will see you all in the outro, folks. Thank you for listening. There you have it, soft pastels. I don't like them as much as oil pastels. I'm not really sure why I bought these. Far be it for me to say that something's messy, but chalk pastels are messy. I got so much Cheeto dust everywhere, all different colors. It was actually quite pretty. So this is what I ended up with. As you can see, it's been sitting in the binder for all of an hour, and it is just coating the back of this page. Okay, so the stuff in the binder is not really stuff that's going to be seeing the light of day anytime soon. It's mostly practice and rejects. I'm not too worried about it being messy in the binder. A uh, couple of things. This is mixed media paper. This is not pastel paper. I have seen the difference that proper paper makes for pastels. Not gonna worry about making a final judgment. It's okay on mixed media paper. I feel like with some, maybe a couple more deep colors, I could really make it pop on mixed mixed media paper. Me tense is gonna be the real test for it. And so we're gonna probably see that a little bit further down the road. I just wanted to have fun with this one. It's been a hard couple weeks. I, sometimes I just like to relax. Not my favorite, lots of potential. You get a little bit more control than you do with oil pastels. Oil pastels are just kind of like all over the place. Chalk pastels are like almost surgical compared to the oil pastels that I've been using. I do like them. I will try them again. I think I made a good purchase with Mungio. They are marketed as professional quality, uh, whatever that means for chalk pastels. Um, so that's about it for me this week, and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you all next Saturday. Bye bye. <laughs>